everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, the big eclipse of 2024 came and went through Texas. And although we all had a great location to take a look at it, the clouds had another idea and uh, started off like this, progressively got worse. And I really didn't think we were going to be able to see the eclipse. However, everybody was ready. We had the shirts to prove it. The dogs were ready as well. And we had the glasses. I had the camera ready to go also and was trying to hope that we would get some images in between the clouds. And as more and more people showed up, uh, we were all getting ready for that eclipse, and it uh, finally happened. I was worried that this image that I had on my phone was the best I was going to see. However, the clouds had breaks in between, started getting glimpses like this with my phone, so I was able to grab a few stills from the event, and here are some of the ones that I took as the solar eclipse continued to progress, and of course the sun getting smaller and smaller, and here's some good uh, shots of it just before it got to totality, and of course at this image I was able to snap during the totality so pretty neat to see it got extremely dark just like it was in the middle of the night as you can tell by this photo and also the dogs had a great time with the the solar eclipse and this image of a t-38 is from where i went to pilot training also spacex got into the act and they showed a image from a starlink satellite of the eclipse you can see the shadow that is going by at the top of the screen and that is what came right over my part of Texas, and it was just a really great event overall. But now it's time to get the drone again and uh, put behind us the eclipse of 2024. So let's get into the drone, let's fly around, and let's see what Giga Texas looks like today after the big eclipse. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. What a beautiful sunrise here at Giga Texas and we are starting off obviously early in the morning trying to give you a good view of all of the locations around the site and some updates uh, since my last video. We'll start here on the far southwest corner. This large parking area continues to get the trenching conduit, the bases for the light poles installed and preparation eventually for paving in this area. Now this could be a parking lot or it might be used as an outbound lot for the next generation vehicle when that does come online later this year and into 2025. We also see this area here on the remaining pond and it looks like they are removing more dirt they are loading it up onto these center dump trucks and then they are redistributing it to other parts of the site this suggests that they are lowering the grade here and possibly either using this as just dirt or maybe they are preparing for construction in sometime in the near future but you can see the kind of terraced and the various uh, different altitudes here on the uh, grade on that area. As we fly up over these smaller power lines, we can see the West Material Staging Yard, some of the superchargers on the bottom left getting ready for installation. This large 
new asphalt paved location being used for trailer storage. We see the ducting on the left that will be used for that uh, roof over the body in white that uh, has had that uh, section removed. A lot more new steel being stored here as well, and much of the TKS modular paint system items have been moved and installed inside of the factory. As we cross over this road, this is a good view of the outbound lot. The Model Ys are mostly on the left, a lot of cyber trucks on the right over near the end of line facility with some change of operation there as well, and we'll see that later in the video. But this is a good low altitude view over the outbound lot and getting a good idea of the uh, operations in progress here today. things that you can see on the right hand side of the screen is that Model Ys are now using these superchargers in addition to Cybertrucks. And here we see many Model Ys, uh, some of them the Quicksilver Gray intermixed with all of the other colors. And we see on the upper left this large section of this lighter color silver called Quicksilver Gray. And this was a Berlin only color, but it seems like most of the Tesla factories are now adopting this color. So we'll probably see this offered here in North America very soon. We see some more Cybertrucks and Model Ys arriving to the north end of the end of line facility. And then in this section, asphalt has been poured. They've lined some of the parking lots. This tells us that this is pretty much a parking lot now. And uh, with this other dirt section with similar uh, kind of rounded curbs where the lights will be. It looks like most of this is going to be parking, at least for this period of time. And we'll see if they do anything uh, different or if they remark it later on. And we can also see some of the curb work in and amongst where they're doing the trenching here in the center of the screen. We see Model Ys now using the test track where we've only seen Cybertrucks up until now. So that suggests that uh, the test track on the east side testing a calibration lot may no longer be operational. And this is where they're going to do all testings for now on. We do see a lot of cyber trucks on the north and east side of the end of line facility. Also that pressure washing or spray washing section here on the north end next to that white tank. This is because of the routing out of the south end of the factory through the construction zone and it gets some mud and dirt on the bottoms of the uh, cyber trucks and on the wheels. So they're cleaning that off. It's a good low altitude view of all of the cyber trucks that are stored here on this east side of the end of line and how it looks today and some quick views inside this open door where the processing lines uh, continue and then the vehicles exit on the south end. We do see more of the Model Ys being processed here today. We will not see any Model Ys or extremely few of them on the east side. And with the Model Ys on the superchargers here, it suggests that a change of operations on how the end of line functions and the routing of the vehicles has taken place over the last uh, week and more cyber trucks parked on the south end of the supercharger lot as well plus we have this tent where uh, final checkouts are done and more of the model y's are stored here along with another cleaning section for the cyber trucks on this part of the site as we cross over this dirt area where eventually it will be paved we see some of the concrete vaults getting ready for installation and then as i zoom in the concrete tunnel sections waiting for installation into the tunnel that is uh, underway this morning while I'm flying the drone. And we'll see the operation of the belt cassette, the belts and the dirt spoils uh, coming out of the tunnel here shortly. But this is a good view of the three silos for the grout factory. That trailer that uh, has those two smokestacks sticking up, that's the generator for the Proofrock 3. Some of the other equipment here uh, next to the trailers for the West Warehouse on Wheels. And as I maneuver around the rising sun, I'll give you a good view of this spoils basin with a lot of the dirt that has 
uh, arrived here. It is cleaned out by this excavator and it's moved into trucks and moved away. We can see that the belt cassette and the belt on the conveyor is operational and you can actually see the dirt uh, coming out of the tunnel and the boring machine is operational, uh, making more of the tunnels right now and a good view of workers walking out of the tunnel, the concrete segments that are in place so far, how the uh, conveyor belt goes inside, and we see that red and white uh, train that is used to pick up the tunnel segments. We see a forklift getting ready to uh, lift those onto that train. Those are moved inside, and as the boring machine moves far enough, the pistons are retracted, the tunnel segments are installed, and that adds another segment and length to the tunnel, and then that repeats as it continues to get deeper. Here's a good view of the Cleared location showing basically the tunnel uh, direction coming up to the highway and based on just the speed that they've been drilling and putting in the tunnel segments, the tunnel may be at the highway level or at least underneath the highway at this point in time. Here's a really good close in view of how that tunnel segment looks. The control uh, trailers on the left, more of the parts of the Proof Rock 3 that uh, are waiting to be moved in and follow in the drilling head as that operation continues. And a nice uh, pullback uh, shot of the overall operations here. The entire west support facility and of course the outbound lot and the end of line facility here on the west side. <music> We're resuming the narration here on the east side of the highway, showing you the uh, extension and, and how it looks today, the glass uh, on the south and southeast corner, and it is starting to have more glass installed in that middle section, the cyber pond. Many of the trailers with the crates for the glass lined up on the south end as well. And on the southeast side, we get a good look here at the work that's been done with these red forms for these uh, footings and also as I zoom in you'll see that the column rebar is very tall out of these and there's a second parallel excavation with some of those geo piers on the bottom you can see those dots all of this is getting prepared for probably more of these footings it's a very interesting structure I do not know what this is going to be uh, but it is unlike anything else that we have seen at Giga Texas throughout all the construction. So definitely interesting to try to figure out what this is for. Good zoom in view of more of the steel that has been assembled on the right hand side around the tanks. More of the steel on the ground for the installation. How the south end extension looks now with more, more of the roof decking and floor decking installed. And of course how these... Uh, Tanks are now enclosed with some of the floor decking being uh, put up onto some of the beams. Speaking of which, we do see the crane in action here picking up another beam and we'll follow the lift up to about where the workers are in that man lift or that cherry picker and just get a sense of how this operation goes. Now, while we're watching this on the ground is where the cyber trucks used to exit the factory and then proceed to the outbound lot or the east testing lot. That's no longer possible with all of this construction. So they've rerouted and it goes through portions of the new south structure. And this creates some issues, some with timing, but also with mud. And this is one of the reasons why they're clearing off the mud on the west side with those spray off uh, booths that we saw on the north and that southwest side. It's a good view of some of the concrete work that is going on here in this segment. Uh, we see that uh, large pit on the left in concrete. We see the tunnel segment on the left of the screen. And as I turn towards this direction, we see a lot of the concrete trucks lining up for the pump truck. They are actively pumping in concrete to this uh, slab section. We see the yellow moisture proof barriers. And uh, there's not a lot of rebar here. So this seems to be a very thin amount of uh, concrete not heavily reinforced. So this is uh, kind of uh, a little strange 
arrangement that they have with this concrete pour. And on the left, we see the forms for the third of those kind of tunnel segments that go along that center section of the south end. More of the roof decking being applied. And as I turn the drone around here, I'll look down. You can see some of the glass in those crates, more of the steel, the uh, trapezoidal atrium for possibly the entrance on the left-hand side of the screen. And again, some of the offices and workshops for the glass installation. This also gives you a good view of how much of the concrete's been poured on the second floor and the next large segment of the floor decking with the rebar getting ready for that concrete pour. As I bring the drone down in lower, I'll zoom in. You can get a good sense of this uh, one of three tunnel segments. They have the rebar on the top. They've been pouring some of the concrete to make the roof and or the floor of that uh, area over that uh, underground tunnel. And the perimeter gray beam is again marked for cutting out where these tunnel segments reach to it. And I'll zoom back in and get a good view of that uh, cutout that I showed you, it's right next to that yellow beam with suction cups. It's being used for the window installation, but a good view here of the concrete on that roof segment and then those rails and wood along that top level. And that yellow crane is uh, for the glass installation, which is now resuming on the south end. We see more of these uh, kind of the Platforms on the bottom of the screen, that is what is used to hold the glass inside those crates. And then here we see more rebar, more of the large beams on the left, all being positioned for installation. And of course, the uh, two parallel uh, lines uh, with the large red footings and more work going on just underneath the power line. So a lot of activity going on the south end. As we continue to fly towards the east, I'll show you how the progress is going for River Road's extension that will connect River Road on the south end of the main building all the way here to this intersection, which is the intersection with Robotic Avenue, which will go off to the right where all of those stainless steel or the, the corrugated pipes are located. You can see some of that road work right now. And we do see how the multi-level parking garage looks today. The essential structure is completed. We saw that in my last video with the tree topping ceremony. And on both sides, we see more trenching and some of those uh, steel corrugated pipes for the underground water management system being uh, installed on both the north and south ends of the, the uh, multi-level parking garage. And you can see some of the trench boxes on the bottom of the screen in those trenches. More of the roofs getting the rebar mesh ahead of getting more concrete, and they're doing more of the concrete work on the other floors, including the ground floor as well. This is a good view of the east side of the body in white part of the factory on the left-hand side of the screen, and the multi-level parking garage on the right-hand side of the screen. And as I continue to maneuver the drone in this direction, fly along the power lines, give you a good view of all of the activity on this part of the site. And as we fly over the sedimentation basin, which has all this water at the bottom of the screen right now, we can get a good sense of the activity here on the east testing and calibration lot. There are a few model-wise, but it's almost all cyber trucks now. And of course, we can see the Rainmaker the helicopter pad and the wind tunnel with that green uh, generator next to it. And as I maneuver the drone a little bit more, this gives you a good idea of just how this is almost now completely cyber trucks with very few of the Model Ys. There is a cyber truck next to the wind tunnel as well. As I get lower and we fly over the parking lot or the east testing calibration lot, we get a good sense of how this looks and not many of the vehicles in the superchargers either. So that may be part of that operational change to the west. These five receiving doors on the left have gotten almost all of the concrete now poured and they're assembling those uh, enclosures on the outside of the receiving doors. More of the Cybertruck castings, pre preparation for the uh, concrete and that apron with those new receiving doors as well. This concrete next to the two towers has been extended over towards the berm. That is all new. More of what I think are Model Y castings on the bottom neatly uh, put together and stacked. And we see some of the Cybertrucks on the left. 
The large clearing with the screw type piers continues to have a preparation work of the grade now that all the piers are in, and most of the stems of the piers have been cut off level to the ground, although there are a few remaining. And we do see in the uh, corner and the upper right of this uh, clearing area, more of the screw type piers just uh, in a pile waiting for their turn to be installed. As we fly to the north and go over this uh, clearing area, we can see how much of the concrete has been saw cut and removed in this section. And it looks like they are going to be reconfiguring these at least three receiving doors on the left as the concrete continues to be removed. And as we wrap around the corner of the building, it's a good look at all of the racks, some of the castings, and the berm section that's being prepared for erosion control. And one other thing of note, next to the steel beams on the left, we see a brand new door has been cut into this part of the building, installed, and you see that ramp of asphalt. That is new, and that has happened over the last few days. On a previous video, we did see the saw being used by a crane along a track on the wall. So a new receiving door on the northeast corner. We also see on this platform, this crane lifting up some of these uh, pipe segments and a lot of other materials. At first, I thought it was being loaded onto the, uh, the platform and going inside, but I noticed earlier that the parts were actually coming from the inside to this point, and they're being picked up and placed onto the roof. So this looks like it may be a continuation of that long pipe system that we saw being installed. It ro runs uh, from the center of the roof over the paint, over towards the edge of the cash machine roof, and then all the way down to the south, uh, about uh, two thirds of the length of the building, and then it crosses over to the center of the building as well. So it looks like more of that's being installed. The 4680 cell production area that is continuing to get expansion inside, it looks like the work is uh, continuing, uh, most of it in inside, but we do see materials and some more steel items being delivered here on this side of the building as well. I'm gonna fly around this corner uh, fairly quickly and the along the west side of the 4680 cell production portion of the factory because I wanted to take a look at what was going on with this area where the apron's been saw cut, sections have been removed or demolished, the stairs have been removed, and more work on that uh, opening that used to be a receiving door with a ramp. Now we see the ramp is gone and some of that green panels uh, that have been used in a lot of the parts of Giga Texas and usually it gets some sort of a coating and then uh, a textured surface and then it's painted over or stained over to look like the factory. So we'll see if that's the case. As we fly up over the section of roof that has those bricks as part of that repair that was done, I wanted to also take a look at the pipes that I was mentioning uh, earlier and we were seeing being lifted up on that platform. You can see it running across the uh, left and then through where these fan units are over to the right uh, part of the casting machine roof and then about two thirds of the length of the building. So that work seems to be continuing. As we cross over Tesla Road, I did notice there are some developments up near the Megapack and the old temporary electrical switchyard that's been removed. First, we see more conduit work is underway and with that large excavation filled with water, that's probably going to be where concrete vaults are and that will be access for the installation and maintenance of the conduit and the wires going through the conduit. As I cross up over the power lines, we can see more of that work is now proceeding on the west side of what used to be the temporary electrical switch yard. Here's a good low end view of the conduit that's being installed, how it looks right now. It comes in bundles. We see more of those bundles in the left hand side of the screen. And then here we see uh, preparation for concrete vaults in those uh, two excavations, more of the conduit on the top, and again, those uh, bundles on the left that are waiting for their opportunity to be installed. And this work continues through the area where the temporary electrical switchyard used to be, now to the south end of the new electrical switchyard where we see more of the conduit emanating out from underneath that uh, one of the two white control uh, trailers and that's going to connect all the way through at least this part that we've seen 
of this part of the site, and we'll see what uh, this will be used for in the future. But a good overall view of what uh, the remaining parts of that electrical switchyard look like. The new electrical switchyard, and then on the north west corner this excavation work that uh, appears to be uh, repairing a underground uh, pipe possibly that treated water pipe that was uh, donated by tesla to the community and it looks like they are installing some sort of a valve system on the left and you can see a good look at the uh, pipe here on the longer of the two excavations and then as i Pull back and zoom back out. That's a good view of where this is located in relation to the mega packs, the electrical switchyard, and the main factory. So let's fly over and take a look at the cathode and die shop complex of structures. <music> Good view of what's going on the west side with earthwork and I'll continue to fly to the northeast side just uh, to reveal most of the earthwork, some of the mounds of dirt that's being stored here and where also some of the concrete that uh, has been removed on both the uh, east and west sides of the main factory have been brought up for demolition and recycling. And you can see some of that here at the bottom and center of the screen. Not a lot of materials remaining, just what we see on the right-hand side and some of the concrete vault items uh, waiting for installation. The cell test lab has, continues uh, its operation. You see that uh, brown control trailer next to it and uh, all the activity that is going on suggested by the vehicles. The water detention pond with the filtration system and the infall and outfall channels has had a workout with a lot of the rains that we had earlier in the week. The crash test facility looks like it uh, continues to be busy. They have uh, been running many of the crash testing uh, for various models. They have also cleaned up and removed to recycling many of the crash tested vehicles now. So not too many remain. And on the south end, uh, we can see how that looks with that water tank and that uh, kind of that bath with the grate system on top of it. Good look at all the trailers here and the entire east side. The steel corrugated pipe that we can see in the center bottom is for the Tesla Road expansion. And you can see where this is going to go through with all the dirt work uh, at this point in time, but it has yet to be uh, completed. And that uh, is something to continue to watch. On the south end of the die shop, I'll get a lower view. We can see that the ramp has had most of the concrete poured along those two retaining walls. We see the grate at the bottom for the drainage and how this section looks right now. More form work for some more concrete underway. And then the main doors are getting some work here. And you can see that worker on that concrete slab. As we wrap around the building, we'll fly through the alleyway, which is also being used right now for a lot of parking and a good view of the tanks, the vaporizers, some of the manifolds, uh, specifically on the left-hand side of the screen. And as I fly up over the Matheson nitrogen tanks and vaporizers, we can see that those four stainless steel large tanks now have had the large pipes installed from the top going down to that basin and the temporary platform in between these tanks has been removed. And this is a good view of how this installation looks today. More work with the pipes, heat exchangers, and the pumps and valves on the roof of the chilling station or the chiller station. Some of the Evapco fan units that are operational. The north end where we may see more of those Evapco units installed and the temporary platform and rubbish boot, uh, chute looks to be in the process of being disassembled now and work on that opening on that third floor. Maybe they'll be closing it in here soon or they're just reconfiguring it uh, based on the needs that they have now with most of the equipment installed. The west side continues its earthwork. We can start seeing the outline of where the asphalt will be. There's two layers of dirt on top of also geotextile membranes, a small excavation in that uh, bottom center, and all of this will eventually be asphalt, very similar to what we are seeing here on the west side of the die shop. There's a good low altitude view of how this 
part of the uh, site looks today as we are waiting for more concrete next to the main building of the dye shop. So I'll bring the drone up higher. I'll give you a good view from the east looking to the west across the warehouse on wheels, the employee expansion lot, the east lot, and the main factory. I hope that you found everything that we were able to see today helpful and informative. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.